Halloween is one of the most exciting nights of the year. People dress up, go to parties, children go trick-or-treating. It's one of the few times where the night is truly enjoyed by everyone. It's ironic that a night devoted to spirits, monsters, and terror is the one night where we feel safe in the darkness. Just think about it. We walk through unfamiliar neighborhoods, visit the homes of strangers, and open our doors for people dressed as monsters and serial killers. Would we do that on any other night? Of course not. It would be far too dangerous. Halloween is just a special exception, isn't it? No. The dangers we fear by instinct in the dark are still very much present on this most revered night. It was last year on Halloween. I was giving out candy to trick-or-treaters, as all good neighbors do. They were showing up pretty regularly throughout the evening. There were young children accompanied by their parents, teenagers enjoying their night of independence, and even a few nostalgic adults. You never know who's going to show up at your door on Halloween. Eventually it got late, and things started to die down. I hadn't received a trick-or-treater in about an hour, and I was just about to turn my porch light off when there was a knock at the door. It seemed a little late for children to still be out, but I grabbed my bowl of candy anyway. I opened the door, ready to greet the eager trick-or-treaters, and I saw two children wearing the strangest costumes I had seen all night. Their skin was pale, ghostly white in fact. Their eyes were completely black, not just their pupils or irises, their entire eyes were pitch black. Their teeth were jagged, like shark's teeth. They looked more monstrous than any trick-or-treaters I had seen before. But their clothes were plain. They wore ordinary t-shirts and shorts. Completely normal attire. Confused, I asked them, What are you supposed to be? Some kind of monsters? No, the trick-or-treaters responded with discomforting smiles. We're dressed up as humans. Startled, I slammed the door and locked it. The trick-or-treaters stood outside the door for a few terrible minutes, banging on the door and calling for me to let them in. Their knocking caused the whole house to tremble. I could only watch the door as it shook in its frame. I was sure that it would fall off its hinges at any moment and they would be in, and yet I couldn't find it in myself to do anything. I was paralyzed where I stood and transfixed on the door and the sounds of the trick-or-treaters calling to me. Suddenly, it stopped. There was no more pounding on the door, no voices outside, and when I looked out the window, I saw nothing. I'm not sure what stopped them from getting in. Maybe they never really wanted to. Maybe by closing the door, I chose trick, but I don't really care. I just know I never want to see those trick-or-treaters again. I don't know about you, but I'm not opening my door for strangers anymore. Not even on Halloween. The most likely place for a person to disappear is in a parking lot, especially at larger retail stores or amusement parks. It's not always a kidnapping, though, although that's what the owners like to say. The truth is, many parking lots are built over old cemeteries. The park or store will buy the property and move the graves, but they always miss a few. These few will try to get out, to find company again but the asphalt is usually too thick. Sometimes, though, they do get through, and that's when people disappear. A lot of owners then pave over the pothole and forget about it. So, next time you're going through a parking lot late at night to get to your car, mind the potholes, and don't listen to the person in the suit needing some help. They bury men in suits. There was a girl who had an illness, and was bedridden for the majority of her life. She was diagnosed to die within the next couple of months, so her parents decided to spend as much time with her as they could before her time came. They decided that the best thing was to go camping at a local site for a little bit, since the daughter was stuck in the hospital for so long. On their way there, the girl was quiet as usual and laid in the back while the parents talked amongst themselves. When they finally reached their destination, 
they pitched the tent, unpacked everything, and started a campfire. The mother was constantly filming the area and her daughter while the father went out for more firewood. It was getting dark when he came back, but as he approached, he heard the mother scream, so he rushed over to discover that his daughter was standing on her feet, doing a wild, erratic dance before she suddenly dropped dead. After all the funeral processions and grieving had subsided, the parents wanted to see the video the mother recorded on that night. They put the tape in the player and began to watch. At first it just showed the mother looking at the scenery and random animals that passed by in the distance. But as the time frame skipped, it jumped to when she was inside the tent with the daughter as she stood up and began to jerk around. But there was something wrong. At first it was difficult to see, but as they replayed the scene, their horror became more and more real. The entire time the daughter was dancing, there was a ghastly white hand latched onto the top of her head. 